Thank you for joining us for the message, Stewarding What You Hear, part of the Lord I Am Listening sermon series. Pastor Alan Galloway shared this message at First Christian Church of Napa on January 28, 2024. Let's take a quick poll. How many of you said, I heard the Lord speak to me this week? Yep, show of hands. All right, okay, good. Good number of you, good. How many say, I want to hear God speak? Amen, amen. Well, we are in a series where we're learning to listen because there's a difference between hearing God speak but then listening to what God has said. And we want to lean in to that. In fact, uh, I am doing next Sunday night, uh, there'll be no game. I'm strategic here. There'll be no game. And at 6.30, right here in this room, those of you who say, I, I want to learn, I want to hear God speak. But sometimes, Pastor, it is hard to hear God speak because there's so many sounds coming at me. There's so many things that I'm hearing and it gets confusing. And so one of the things that I've been practicing over the last couple of years is just this methodology of just slowing down to be with Jesus in his presence, and in that silence, hearing God speak. So I want to invite you to come and be a part of that. I'm going to do it. It's going to be about 45 minutes here in this room, uh, and, uh, and I'd love for you to do that. You don't need to sign up. Just come, and if there's two of us, awesome. If there's 200 of us, great, great. It just come if you're hungry and you want to do that. I want to hear God speak, and if you want to hear God speak, this is one of the ways to do it. In fact, Many times people say, hey, I've got this issue going on. Will someone else help me hear God speak? And so I want to invite you to pray with us. In fact, email me what God is speaking to you. Prayer at FCCNapa.org is probably one of the easiest ways to get out a request or to share a praise of what God is showing you and revealing to you. And those come to me. And so I want to join you in praying and celebrating what God is up to. Or as David said, you can use our app, download the app, go to the app store, and there's a prayer sheet there you can fill out. There's all kinds of resources that we are uh, providing for you as you continue in your journey of discipleship. In fact, before we go any further, let's pray, right? And some of you wearing red, I know what you're praying for. <laughs> Jesus, thank you that you are a good shepherd and that you call us friend and you reveal to us that we are family. So, Lord, I pray right now over this family of faith that you would help us to hear what you want to reveal to each of us, to us as a community, a family of faith, but also to us individually, Lord, what, what might be something that you're revealing to us, that you're directing our steps, redirecting our steps. Jesus, we want to be humble and receive that today. We thank you, Jesus, that you do speak, that you are a God that is not silent without voice, but that you continue to reveal and speak to your people. So we just invite you. We just say, yes, Lord, we're listening. In Jesus' name, all God's people said, amen, amen, amen. Hey, if you have your Bible, which is a good thing to do, and if you need some duct tape, I got some. If your Bible's falling apart, that's a good way to keep it together as well. Or digital Bible, swipe right. We're going to be in the New Testament, two passages of Scripture I want to look at today. And they're parallel passages, Mark chapter 4, Luke chapter 8. And essentially, these are the same story, but written in two different perspectives. So uh, Mark is recounting the words of Jesus, and Luke is recounting the words of Jesus. And just as a side note parallel, neither one of them were present at this time when Jesus was speaking. So they are recording someone else's message, so we would have this testimony for our lives. So uh, Mark chapter 4, Luke chapter 8, we're going to look at this. And let me recount where we have been over the last few weeks. Week one, we said in John 10, Jesus speaking, he says, I call you sheep. You're sheep, and sheep can hear the shepherd's voice. He's the good shepherd. And so we recognize, okay, we're sheep. We're followers of God. We have this born into us, or better said, reborn into us when we give our lives to Jesus, that we can hear God speak. And so if you need to catch up on that message, go back and listen to that one. That's where it begins, is I can hear God speak. But I'm not just a follower, or sometimes can be translated as just a servant, Jesus calls me a friend. Isn't that great? Your friends. Turn to the person next to you and say, you're my friend. You're my friend. Jesus is our friend, and so he invites us into this next level of relationship, a personal relationship with that, where friends communicate. They speak to one another, but it even gets better than that, right? We are not just friends. We're family. 
for family. And we're with the family of God. We are adopted in. And so we see this progression build. And I want to build on that today. So those three messages were really a foundation for today and the next couple of weeks in this series. This idea of I'm a follower and I'm a friend, but I'm also family. And I build and I grow and I mature in that word. So we're going to today lean in, learn to listen, to hear God speak. And what God wants to speak, I believe to us, each one of us, is this. My word, as God is saying, my word is to be prominent in your life. My word needs to be major. It needs to be the leading word in your life. My word is to be prominent. So we want that in our lives. That's what God wants to reveal today. Now, to help us understand, I want to take a sidestep and just give us a definition of something that's going to help us as we dig in. And it's the definition of the word steward. How many of you are familiar with a steward, what a steward is? All right, steward, like a lot of times we know it from the idea that it's someone who's managing someone else's property. So from a biblical perspective, it's someone who's managing someone else's property or resources. Now, we might think of around here the Napa land stewards who are stewarding proper, our lands around us. You may see that in other scenarios where people are stewarding something on behalf of a community, on behalf of an individual. A lot of times we hear it in the church is about our personal stewardship, how I personally manage my time, my money, my resources, my life, right? How I'm doing that. From a biblical perspective, this is really important. When you said yes to Jesus, have you said yes to Jesus? Jesus, I'm following you. Yeah, yes to Jesus. Jesus, I want to follow you. I give you my life. When you said yes to Jesus, you were a follower. You begin to follow Jesus, right? You got baptized. You followed his commandment. You are a follower, but then you became a friend and you became family. You begin to grow in that. When that happened, when you said yes to Jesus, your time is no longer your time. Oh, I'm going to get personal. Your money is no longer your money. Your life is no longer your life. When you said yes to Jesus, and you became a steward of those things, you put those into God's care, time and treasure and resource, because he's a great provider, even my very life. I mean, think of it this way. You said yes to Jesus as Savior. I love that picture of baptism, is that you go down in the water. Jesus is my Savior. And I'm down there, and that represents the grave, being in the grave with Christ. I'm, he's my Savior, saving me from my sin, from my past, from everything, from now into eternity, Savior. And when you come up out of that water, you declare, he is my Lord. He's my Savior, but he's my Lord. He's my King. My favorite, he's the boss of my life. Anybody said, hey, you're not the boss of my life. Anybody told Jesus that? Brave enough. All right? Right? He's the boss of my life. Now, listen, you can attend church year after year after year and get involved in all kinds of good things and never really follow Jesus. It's possible. It happens. And so what we want to do is in this idea of stewardship as FCCers and those who are following Jesus and being changed by Jesus, committed to the way of Jesus, we're saying, Lord, we're stewarding the time that you've given us the number of our days. We're stewarding the finances that you provide for us because we know you're our source. We're, we're stewarding the gifts, the spiritual gifts that you've put into us. We're stewarding the talents and the skills that we have learned, the education that we've attained. We're stewarding the experiences, both the great experiences and also the very difficult experiences of life. We're stewarding it all for you. Lord, we're putting it into your trust and your care because we know that you are bigger and greater, and you have a great plan. And somebody today right now is thinking, now, how does this have anything to do with listening to God? Anybody? Pastor, get on with it. All right, let's do that. We want to hear from God. What does this have to do? Stewarding, hearing from God, which is a really good question. Let me say it like this. God speaks to us, his word. When we're faithful to, to his word, to receive his word, God will speak more words. Isn't that great? Have you seen that happen? Also, again, when God speaks and we're faithful with it, it's like being, again, a follower and being a friend and being part of the family and part of the family business as I mature in the word, as I mature as an understanding of being part of God's family. God gives more words. We call them sometimes an assignment from the Lord. 
an insight from the Lord. God sends you on assignment, a secret orders, right? You're going to feel like a captain of a ship. All right, here's your sealed orders as you go about, right? It's like it's personal because it's all about personal relationship. And so God continues to do that in us as we're faithful. But listen, if we're not faithful with what God speaks, with God's word, then guess what? Uh, there's no more words coming. Hmm. Why is that, Pastor? It's because God blesses faithfulness. God blesses his favor. It doesn't mean that he doesn't love. Please hear that. He loves you, he loves you, he loves you. He calls you to that love. But God blesses, he gives favor on faithfulness as you step out in faith to follow God. That's where his favor, it's, on, it's honoring the words that God has. All right, that's a context, that's a groundwork for this passage today. Everybody in Mark. So you got one finger in Mark, one finger in Luke. Keep your hands on the Bible. We want to highlight something that might be new for you about this passage. What this passage is speaking to is the context of stewardship, right? It's the story of the soil or the sower of the seed. And this is the context. I'm going to drop right in. So Jesus has been speaking. He's teaching. In fact, I think I said last time I thought on that parable that this was Jesus' most important parable. Jesus is speaking. In verse 24, he says, consider carefully. Consider carefully what you hear. What are you hearing? You're hearing from, the, from God. Consider carefully what you're hearing. You're hearing from God. Continue. With the measure you use, it will be measured to you. And even more, verse 25, whoever has will be given more. Whoever does not have, even what they have will be taken from them. This is a pretty incredible passage. This is powerful. Uh, many times you've heard this verse in the context of a stewardship talk. Uh, I think I probably taught on this at some time in the idea of, again, being financially mindful, of being a financial steward of what God has put in our possession. Maybe you've heard this statement. Those who are faithful with little will be what? Faithful with a lot, right? God gives you a little bit, and I'm faithful with it. God says, hey, I'm gonna pour out more. We're in the context of his word and what he's speaking to us. Can we be faithful with a little bit? Here's what I, I would say is how Jesus, I might put it into everyday terms, Jesus saying, listen, listen, listen. When you hear my word, apply what you hear, right? I'm speaking, apply it to your life, to your everyday life. Be a steward of my words. In other words, let the word be prominent in your life. I want the word to be prominent in my life so that I can continue to hear what God's up to, what God wants to reveal and do. So if I steward that, if you steward that, we steward that, what God speaks to us, God says, I'll pour out more than another word. I'll kind of lead you in another path and another way down the road. I give, you're faithful with it, I'll give you more. And if you don't steward it, guess what? It's going to be taken away and everybody ought to go, whoa. Just go ahead, you can do it. I'll wait for you. Whoa. Uh -huh. We're going to start a choir. Uh, this is super important, super vital. At CC, a disciple is someone, right, is following Jesus, being changed by Jesus, committed to the way of Jesus. If I want to hear God speak, I want to hear his word, then I want to be faithful to what I hear, to that little word that I hear. In other words, it should be prominent. It should be the first, the highest the most important word. So how do you do that? I don't know. Come back next week. We'll figure it out. <laughs> I'm going to share just quickly three things that I help, have helped me over the years to say, God, I want your word to be prominent. I want that. I have a desire, but sometimes I trip up and I don't do that. So what are some things that I continue to come back to that help me to say, Lord, let your word be the most important word. Let your word lead my life today. In my everyday, daily, going about boring life, God, I want your word to lead me, to guide me. So I want to share just a couple things, three things, in fact, to hear from God. First one is right out of Mark's gospel, consider carefully. Consider carefully. Verse 24, we read that. What's that mean? Listen thoroughly. Take heed. Pay attention. Regard. Keep the word of God, the most important, the highest word that you have of all the words that are coming at you each and every day. We live in an information age, and we are being bombarded with all kinds of messages, all kinds of sounds, all kinds of words. If I want his word 
to be at the top. I, I've got to do some things. I want to take heed of what he says. All right, let me just share 10 ways that comes about. How many ways does God speak to you? I heard 30, I heard 40, I heard lots. Yeah, that's a good answer. A lot. Last week I said 50. No one took me up on that to drill me with Bible questions after, right? 50 different ways. Here's just 10, right? In fact, this is a good time to take out your journal. Who's got a journal? All right, write it down, write it down. These are some things that you might want to look at as you're thinking about God speaking to me. How does God speak to me? And a journal is great because you can come back to it and you can see how God spoke to you last year, the year before, and be reminded, be encouraged. And so here's some ways that are common ways that God speaks. One is circumstances. Well, who's the, you know, the, the biblical picture of that? Well, there's a lot, but the one I think of is Jonah. And I love Jonah's story right? Jonah needed to hear God. There was all these circumstances that came into his life, and God was speaking to Jonah to direct him, to correct him, uh, and, and he, Jonah needed to hear that voice. And so in the circumstances, that voice that comes over all of them, he finally hears and responds to it. So circumstances is one way, and that's a picture of Jonah. Here's a second one, counsel. Maybe you need some counsel in your life. Just write down Proverbs. Which one? All of them. Right? There's 31. Read one a day. That's all we ask. Right? Just read one. And if you did that for a year, wow. Wow. That would be powerful in the wisdom that God would deposit into you. Right? You need some counsel for some decisions. Proverbs, the book of Proverbs. How about peace? We live in a world that's very anxious. A lot of things to disrupt peace. Philippians 4, Colossians 3 both say essentially the same thing about the peace of God that resides within us and that we need a peace. How does that translate as we're praying? Well, think of it this way. If you're in a situation, you're praying about something, you have a challenge. There's not a peace that's coming over you to take a step, to follow through, then it may be time to slow down or even better just to stop and say, right here, God, I'm not going unless you're going. Right? Peace. There's a peace that comes. And so that's another way God speaks. God speaks through his people, Right? Acts 21, this is the story of strangers showing up to Paul. He's making some decisions about what to do, and they speak up. They come, and they speak up, and they say a prophetic word over his life. Complete strangers. He's not met them. Have you ever had a stranger that you're with, and they start to read your mail? I'm like, how does this person know? Who is this guy? Have they been following me? You know, you start getting a little paranoid. Maybe that's just me. Uh, have you ever had anybody like that? It's like somebody you just don't even know. And they, yeah, and they come and they just start praying for you and they just start sharing. And in your spirit, you're like, whoa, they know exactly what's going on. You may have been concerned about something. You have a decision to make. And out of their prayer, they just start speaking a word and you know immediately, this is God. This is God speaking to this complete stranger. That's Acts 21. That's what's going on. Dreams and visions, back to last year, our average Joe series. The whole thing was about a dream. Joseph. And Joseph had these uh, powerful dreams from God, but not just Joseph. His father, Jacob, had them. And Solomon, the greatest uh, uh, person of wisdom in the scriptures in all the world. New Testament, Peter and John, followers of Jesus, and Paul. They all had dreams and visions that God spoke to them, was leading and directing them. How about thoughts? This is one we always wrestle with, right? Is that my thought? Is that God? We kind of go back and forth. Amos chapter 4 and Matthew chapter 1 both talk about God depositing thoughts into us to help us communicate, to affirm, confirm something that he's speaking to us. A side note, sometimes the devil throws things in your mind. That's why you need the word in different ways coming at you. That's why you need the counsel of believers, wise believers in our lives. How about uh, natural phenomenon, natural manifestations? Romans chapter 1 says, that all of creation reveals the divine nature of God, the glory of God. But not just in the natural, the supernatural, right? This is God speaking to Moses in a burning bush. This is God speaking to the apostle Paul on the road to Damascus. Natural and supernatural ways. How about this one? This is a great one. The whisper. First Kings chapter 19, the story of Elijah. Elijah's had this most powerful moment with God. A supernatural events, a mountaintop experience, and moves right into a valley depression, overcome, thinks he's the only one left that follows God. And God shows up, not in supernatural ways, not in natural manifestations, but shows up what? In a whisper. Better translated from the original language, it's the sheer silence of God. God speaks even in silence. 
Oh, I love that. That's powerful. And then most important, right, or one of the top ten, right, the Bible. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, and hearing what? The word of God, God's message. I mean, I, we just keep going on and on. Is it possible that God is speaking to us all the time? And those who choose to hear and those who hear are paying attention. Pay attention. I want to slow down. I want to hear what God is saying. If you want a word from God, I just invite you to slow down and pay attention. I have this really old radio, like from when I was maybe high school, which is like really old. <laughs> Katie, you don't need to laugh that hard. <laughs> I just need a minute. Um, <laughs> I got this radio, and it really is. It's old, and it's a piece of junk, and I've got, like, this antenna that's bent. I got, like, a paper clip stuck in it. It got to move it around, and then when I dial in with it, uh, I've got to shove another paper clip in it just to get it right. Now, I, I listen to it in the summer as I'm tinkering in the garage and listening to um, uh, the ball game because I'd rather listen to a baseball game than watch a ball game, and uh, I, it's out there, but it's such a chore. It's such a challenge to finally get in the radio, and there it is, and hold it at the right angle. And some of you are thinking, Pastor Alan, what are you doing? Are you just that cheap? Yeah, I am. Uh, <laughs> but there's something about it. And what it reminds me is, like, that's a little bit of pursuing this desire with God. There's an art to tuning in to hear God speak. Sometimes we just like, God speak, God speak, God speak. And he wants to, and he is. But I, I'm way too busy to slow down to pay attention. Mark chapter 4, you got your Bible, look at verse 9. What did Jesus say? He who has ears to hear what? Let him. Was it because there's people with no ears in the audience that day? Or was it because some people had uh, the difficulty hearing, hearing impairment? Was there something going on? No. He was saying, if you have ears, it's a spiritual thing. Listen, if you have, hear. Listen, I want you. So I want to hear God. I need to tune in and listen. I want to steward my time with God so that I might steward his word. Maybe this, this month, this year, you have some job decisions you have to make. Maybe there's some health decisions that are in front of you that are challenging. Uh, maybe you have a friend and that, that relationship's a little fractured. Maybe it's all three. The trifecta. Prayer at FCCNAPA.org. I would love to join you in praying what God might be revealing in each of those situations. I, I would imagine there's a hundred different requests right here in this room. Hmm. Consider carefully what God is saying. Second one is simply this. If I want to hear God speak, I need to humble myself. Humble myself. Now you're in Mark. Flip to Luke 8 real quick. Again, the same story. It's a parallel story that Jesus told. And both of these are, again, talking about the soil. And so the idea is the soil is the soil of your heart. Uh, the word is referred to as a seed that goes and gets planted in the heart. And the good question before us today is, what is the composition of the condition of my heart? Is my heart receptive today to hear what God wants to speak, what God is speaking? Has my heart gotten a little cold, maybe a little hard today, that it's hard to hear God speak? Especially if it's like correction, discipline. Mm. How about there's cares and worries that seem to be choking out what God is speaking to you? That's pretty common today. Jesus recognized that. He addressed it. In verse 18 of Luke 8, we read the same passage that we just read. It's a little different. And this is what I want you to see. Therefore, consider carefully how you listen. Whoever has will be given more. What Whoever does not have, even what they have, what think they have, will be taken from them. In other words, Jesus is saying, hey, when I speak, consider carefully to what I say, to my word. Consider it carefully and how you receive it. So what it is, what I'm speaking, and how you receive it. That's really good. That's really good. It's a big question. Again, what's the condition of my heart? Is it ready to receive? Because what it does is it reveals my level of stewardship, how I steward what God is speaking. I want to illustrate it this way. 
uh, one of the hallmarks of being a mature follower of Jesus to say, I'm teachable. Are you teachable? Yes. Give yourself a pat on the back. I'm teachable. That's right. I'm teachable. I receive the word. So when we receive the word, we receive it. If we're teachable, we receive it with this posture of humility. And it's kind of like this. This is how I demonstrate humility. It's my hands are open before the Lord, upright, so that Lord can take something out, a prayer, a desire that I have. God, you go ahead and take it. I give it to you. I, I humble because I know you're up to good and you have the best uh, in mind for me. I don't grip it because that becomes painful when the Lord wants to take it. But I just hold it out before the Lord. Lord, here it is. Posture of humility. Because when I do that, the power of the word that God speaks saves my soul changes my thinking, redirects my steps. I hear a lot of folks a lot of times say, uh, I want to hear from God. And they get a a true word from the Lord. It's something that God is speaking to them. They say, you know what? I really don't like that. Can I like roll the dice and get another one? (laughs) Well, they get really angry. When you're speaking truth and you're doing it with compassion, but they get really angry. I don't want to hear that. Who are you? Say the boss of my life. Or really hurt, right? Really sad, hurt, because it's convicting. There's something going on here, right? Please hear me. This is so, so important to the journey of faith, the disciples' faith. When pride is in my life, this unhealthy pride, God stops speaking to me. Well, yeah, somebody got it. God stops speaking those directive words because he's speaking a corrective word. God wants to direct. He wants to lead. But he's not with his word because he's speaking this corrective word. Well, why is that, Pastor? Well, in my life, it's because pride uses his word for selfish motives, for selfish gain. See, God doesn't speak to prove my point. Oh, man, that would be so awesome. It'd be wonderful. God doesn't speak to show everyone else around me how smart I am, how right I am, how everybody should be following me because I wear the title leader. God doesn't speak for me to build my castle. God speaks to build a kingdom, his kingdom. He's advancing his word. God will not give us, a, give me a word, give you a word, give us a word to those who are going to misuse it. It's faithfulness. Now let's rewind back to 2023. Year ago, years ago, (laughs) our average Joe series. Joseph got a word from the Lord. You remember how, in fact, let's look at this passage in Genesis 37. I'm going to bring it up on the screen. You can write it down in your journal. Let's look at it this week. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they rejoiced with him, right? What is, what's it say? I hate him all the more. You're stinking. Right? <clears throat> Verse 6, he said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose up and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. How to win friends, influence people. Verse 8, his brother said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream what he had said to them. And we talked a lot about that uh, in that series, and it's a kickoff point, but I don't want you to miss this today, is that God is the one who gave him the dream. God's word was true. It was at the right time in the right moment. God gave him the dream, spoke to Joseph in that dream, but Joseph did not steward that word. Why would I say that? Because why would he go tell his brothers? Nowhere do we see God said, and I only want you to go tell your brothers. God does that sometimes, a hard word, and go tell this person, But that was not the case here. My personal take on it is because of his immaturity, his pride. Boy, immaturity and pride are like peanut butter and jelly, right? They just go together. They just stick together. God gave him a dream. It was from him. In fact, you remember that God gave him even a second dream about this and what his destiny and purpose was like. He goes and tells it. This time his dad's there and his dad rebukes him. He didn't let it the first time. What's really interesting about the story I'm going to highlight today is that God, again, speaking the dream at that moment, at that time, dream one, dream two, but guess what? Never again did God speak to Joseph in a dream. Never. Well, at least we don't have it recorded that he did. 
God gave him those two dreams for what? So that he would steward those. But his pride squandered it. Huh. Now, Joseph's primary gift from God was his leadership ability. That was that whole purpose of those 10 weeks on Joseph's life is integrity in our leadership. We want to live with integrity, just like Joseph. But do you remember what his other gift was related to dreams? God gifted him with the ability to interpret dreams. And so at the right time, at the right moment, he has the opportunity to do do that, to interpret a dream. In fact, God is redeeming Joseph because the pride that had taken root in his heart is being uprooted. Humility is being planted into his heart at this time. And as his heart is humbled, as he's choosing to walk in a humble way with integrity before the Lord, God gives him the opportunity to interpret, interpret for the baker and the butler their dreams. Through that decision and where he's at, he steps into his purpose what God had to design all the way back when he first got that dream. Remember how old he was? 17. Huh. So important. When God speaks, we receive it with humility. James 4, verse 6 and 7. But he gives us what? More grace. More grace. That is why the scripture says, God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble. Submit, another word for humble, yourselves. Then to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. It would be great to resist the devil today. Yes, at least I would, and one other person, I'm with you. Yeah, let's resist. Let's do that, right? But I'll tell you, it becomes very difficult to resist the devil if God is resisting you. Why? Because when pride resides in your heart, God resists you. One of my favorite illustrations, I think I've shared this before, it's um, around this idea of the word resist. Resist is, in this context, a military term. It's got all that connotation to it, which reminds me exactly of football. I know those of you who are like, oh, I can't stand football. You only got two more weeks, just a couple more weeks. Just hang with us. If you need another illustration, just see me after service. But this is the one that helps me, right? It's like a football team, right? All these different players, all these different positions. Who's the quarterback on the football team? The service just increased in length for you. Jesus is my quarterback. Is Jesus your quarterback? If he's not over here, you need to come forward and give your life to the Lord right now. Listen, Jesus is my quarterback. He's the captain of the team. He makes the calls. He he calls audibles. And you are the wide receiver. You can be McCaffrey, right? You, get to, you can run the ball. You score touchdowns. Jesus loves that. He loves to see you celebrate and, and to honor God. Who's God? Offensive lineman. <laughs> Go with me. Offensive line. He mows down the defense, the enemy in front of you. He opens up a huge hole for you to run and have victory in your life. I love that. Keep that in mind. Because years and years, you know that, you, you settle that in your heart, and God's giving you victory and victory and victory. And one day you say to God, hey, God, grab it. Grab a seat. I got it. I got this. I am fast. I got mad skills, right? I can do it. And so we think, God says, oh, okay. Goes, grabs his Gatorade bottle, sits down, and kind of watches. That's what we think happens, right? Show of hands. How many of us, that, that's what happens. Oh, you guys are smart. No hands going up. Good. Because that's not at all what happens. What happens is when I say, hey, I got this, I decide to go on to the other team and put their jersey on and then line up, and then God lines up in front of me and says, okay, let's see how far you can go. That's what this means. God resists the proud, gives grace, more grace to the humble. See, a lot of us sometimes think, hey, I'm hearing from God. I've, I got a message from the Lord. I'm hearing God. <clears throat> and it's really not. It's the other team. It's a familiar spirit. And God's saying, that, that's not me. God doesn't speak more words to the proudful heart, but to the humble heart, right? Consider carefully. Consider it with humility. Finally, honor his word. Honor his word. That is the benefit of a journal, is that you write down some things that you sense God showing you, God directing you, that you can go back and refer to, you can be encouraged, that you you can be uh, reminded of how God has been faithful, how God has shown up. I love this about God. In fact, I love this about the story of Jonah. Jonah's story really speaks to it. 
There's so much we could go on to here, but this, let me briefly summarize it like this. God is speaking, and God says, no, uh, Jonah, I've got a plan. I've got a directive word for you. Go to Nineveh. Everybody, there's, there's Nineveh's over there, right? Go to Nineveh. So he gets that word. It says, go to Nineveh. I'm going to Tarshish. <laughs> Right? I'm going to jump the first boat, which is what he does, uh, sailing in the complete opposite direction. That's like putting on the opposite uniform. Uh, long story short, storm rages, gets very intense. People are uh, fearful of alive. We're going to all die. We're all going to die. God's speaking corrective words, right? He gave him a directive word, but now he's speaking corrective words. And he gets so convicted, he goes to the captain of the ship and confesses, I'm the problem, I'm the problem. The captain says, I got an answer. We just toss you over. And that's what they do. They throw him over. And, huh, how awesome God is, God has prepared a fish. <laughs> now, I know scientifically we say, that's just crazy, that's impossible, that can't happen. But just interview Mike Pickard, who was swallowed a couple years ago by a whale and lived to tell about it. Now, listen, for me, I don't even need Mike Pickard, but here's the situation, right? God sets the stars and the sun in motion, and God can prepare a fish. And so Jonah lands up in the belly of this fish in an air pocket. He survived. It's smelly and stinky. I mean, you smell rotten fish. I mean, of course, that's what this fish's stomach smells like. And he finally comes to this place where he says, okay, I was wrong. Have you ever said I was wrong? That's powerful. I was wrong. I'm ready to go to Nineveh. Right? He considered God's word. He humbled himself in that fish. And then he said, I will honor it. I'll live it out. I'll do it. I'll do it. See, at times I might say, I'm just not hearing God. I just don't hear God right now. Have you ever said, I'm just not hearing God? If that happens, just press pause on life, right? Just press pause for a few minutes. Take a look at the events and circumstances around you. Go back to your journal. Go back to the last word God gave you to direct your steps and confirm that you did it, that you followed through because God honors faithfulness, that you followed through with what he told you. So every one of those situations, oh, yeah, God, I'm going to do that. I want to follow you. I want to give my life for you. Whatever you say, I'll do this. It may be restoring a relationship. It may be, you know, making a financial comp- contribution to a mission organization. It, it could be a variety of things. I'll do that. I'll give forgiveness. I'll ask for forgiveness. On and on the list goes, I'll do that. And then you forgot to do it. Or better said, you just kind of ignore doing it. I've been there. more grace for the humble. Consider Mark and Luke's words to us today with humility. Hear them, honor what they're saying, honor God's word by acting upon it. It is amazing that more grace comes, more grace upon grace as I steward the word. God is so good. He's up to good. Would you agree? He's up to good. Humility gives us the ability to hear that. He's so generous that he gives more and more and more because that's God's nature. I just invite you to humble yourself. Consider, maybe reconsider what God has spoken to you that he's calling you into. It could have been something that was several years ago. It could have been something right now in this service. Let me invite you to stand. Worship is going to lead us in a song, and it is a great prayer song of what God might be speaking and revealing to you today. And I just want to invite you, like I said, with many hands opened up, just close your eyes, and that's just to give yourself that focus time with the Lord in this moment, this holy moment. God, I want to hear what you are saying. I want to follow you, Jesus, where you're leading. Spirit of the living God, would you fall afresh on us now? Thanks again for joining us for today's message from First Christian Church. If you'd like to take a step in your faith and connect with a staff member at FCC, visit FCCNAPA.org slash connect. To stay up to date on things going on in the FCC community, we invite you to follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and be sure to subscribe to the FCC NAPA YouTube channel. Have a great day.